In inhabiting the stage, the viewer inside Baldassare Perusi Perusi's Sala de la Prospectiva, Gonzalo Buenos Vera, PhD candidate at the School of Architecture, McGill University, Canada. This is a virtual lighting talk for the 8th International Conference on the Image and the Image Research Network. The Villa Farnesina gets its name after the Farnese's family acquired and incorporated the Villa Chigi to the Villa Farnese in 1584. The Villa Farnesina's location was on the outskirts of Rome by then, on the Tiber West Banks near the Porta Settimiana. It was commissioned by the Chinese banker Agostino Chigi and built between 1509 and 1511. According to Paul D'Ancona, the purpose of the villa was to be a bower of delight where the master could relax and be merry. These two stories are entirely built in brick, having a belvedere at the rough top level. The villa also has a U-shaped configuration in plan, with two main facades, one facing, one facing north and containing a loggia, and another one facing south towards the Villa Farnese's gardens. It's in here where the Sala de la Prospectiva sits. Most of the gardens of Agostino Chigi also occupy the plot between the Villa Farnesina and the Tiber, in contrast to the neighbor's villa location, which directly sits on the riverbank. Baldassare Peruzzi, the commissioned architect of the Villa Farnesina, was birthed as an architect and artist because of his education in Siena. According to Paul D'Ancona, Peruzzi was a student of Francisco Di Giorgio, who was in Siena by the time Peruzzi was trained as an architect. As for his astrology knowledge, Cynthia Stolhans mentions that Bernardino Pinturicchio was for Perugia of, of significant influence because of his popularity as a painter during Perugia's education, who had many first-hand opportunities to study the master's works as a student in Siena. Therefore, Perugia acquired a privileged artistic background which came from the influence of architecture and in-progress architectural representation learned from Di Giorgio and the fresco technique mastery from Pinturicchio. Both inspiration had a remarkable outcome in the Villas Farnesina once Perugia settled itself at Rome. The pictorial and architectural qualities configuring the particular ambience of the Sala de la Prospectiva responded to Agostino Chigi's demands on having inspiring visuals for his visitors based on cutting-edge pictorial techniques of the epoch. Whoever entered was able to get the impression of a de deistic embodiment through the illusion of rooming inside a Roman temple over a mountain top. On the walls of the sala, the Roman temple's colonnades were also placed, matching the real dimensions of this room's interior with those of the imaginary temple. Besides, other architectural features on the walls of the sala take a decisive stand by being somewhat integrated into the quadrature composition. Hence, the doors, for instance, become the frontal side representation of ambitioned booths. The windows, in turn, represent no more an opening to the exterior, but instead they open to an entirely disconnected plane. As for the walls, they are pictorially materialized from solid partitions to illusionistic thresholds towards a painted loggia around this fictional temple. This opposite duality from transparent features to blocking tableau and from solid parameters to translucent screens is definitely worth attention, especially considering the magical and alchemical faculties of men competing with almighty gods. The architecture configured in the sala acquires a particular role when matching with the architectural-like frescoes around. The role of this leading backdrop renders an architecture that is suspending time or rather dissolving it in space and providing simultaneously a framework for human action. Even though this was not the exclusive case of this room, it was only here where the immersive capacity reached its peak. The interaction of the viewers allows the emergence of this first impression in front of the illusionistic stage. This, conditions, this condition remarkably embeds in the sala through Perusi's ability to project three-dimensional space using the art of, of perspective. On the one hand, a close dialogue between painting and viewer results through the familiarity of this latter with foreshortened spaces and architecture. This familiarity is wholly based and accepted on the appearances of the portrayed architecture on the Sala's frescoes, even when the virtual image of this Olympian temple is fictional.
On the other hand, a distance between perspectiva naturalis and perspectiva artificialis increasingly emerges, resulting in a detachment of the architectural project from the real world. Thank you very much.